In this short video, let's take a look at the difference between two categories of term structure models. My first category is arbitrage free models and my second category is equilibrium models. Let's begin with taking a look at the difference in the core meaning or essence of these two categories. An arbitrage free model, its main intent is to capture the information which the market serves to you. This information can be about how investors expect short term rates to evolve with time. This information can be about risk premiums, which investors believe are embedded in the prices of long term bonds compared to prices of, let's say, short term bonds. But whatever the source of this information is, the model believes that the information is important enough to be captured accurately inside the model. Okay. Now let's come to an equilibrium model. An equilibrium model, it starts with a certain core assumption. This core assumption can be, for example, about mean reversion of interest rates. I mean, the model believes that there is a long term mean interest rate, which is, let's say, governed by the productivity of capital or let's say governed by the monetary policy. And the short term rates slowly and steadily mean revert towards this long run average mean rate. An equilibrium model can start with this assumption that there is a risk premium which is required, let's say, to entice investors to shift their, let's say, focus away from short term bonds into investing in long term bonds, which we know carry higher amount of interest rate risk. But whatever the starting assumption is, the intent of the model is to start from that assumption and then somehow build a risk neutral model that can then price various instruments or securities. Okay, so at the heart of the model, remember this, that there is an interest rate assumption which this model starts with. Okay, then let's move on to a very important difference and that's what textbooks quote as the main difference between these two categories and that is how the two categories deal with the initial term structure of interest rates. An arbitrage free model, I know it tries to capture information from the market. It believes that information is golden. It needs to be captured accurately. And therefore, when you serve a term structure of interest rates to an arbitrage free model, it will try to exactly match that term structure. It will try and calibrate itself to that term structure of interest rates. And by that, I mean that if you were to price after calibration is done, I mean, if you were to price various market traded bonds or swaps using this arbitrage free model, then you will be able to get from the model the same price as what is being traded in the market. I am here focusing on those instruments which went into creation of the term structure of interest rates. Remember that concept of or that procedure of bootstrapping. So I'm referring to those instruments here, basically. Okay. Now let's come to equilibrium models. Equilibrium models, we said their core was some kind of an assumption. Okay. Some kind of an equilibrium model of the economy. That assumption is what this model wants to be built upon. But this model cannot really operate in isolation. At, at some stage, this model has to be as close as possible to what the market is telling you. So while this equilibrium model has absolutely no intent to exactly match the term structure of interest rates, but it still tries. It tries to match it on a best fit basis. So you might be able to match your market term structure at some tenors or maturities, but you won't be able to match it exactly. Okay. So this is about the difference in the treatment of the term structure of interest rates. Next, let's take a look at this definition of arbitrage. If an arbitrage free model says that I am arbitrage free, this arbitrage is with respect to the market or versus the market. I told you that this arbitrage free model, when it tries to exactly match the market term structure, it does so by making sure that the model price or yield is exactly equal to the market price or yield. Okay. So the absence of arbitrage is basically with respect to the market. 
when it comes to equilibrium models the model prices which you get from this model are consistent with each other what does that mean all these model prices are arrived at using a model which was founded on that core assumption which it began with okay and therefore when you get all these model prices all these model prices are therefore consistent with that assumption and hence they are consistent with each other as well so these model prices we say they don't allow for arbitrage in the sense of these prices being internally or endogenously consistent but when you compare these model prices with the market prices of course you will have gaps okay the model prices may or may not match the market prices and that's where this model comes and tells you that there are securities out there which are underpriced relative to the market and there are securities which are overpriced relative to the market okay so that's the difference between how these two sets or categories of models deal with this concept of arbitrage okay now let's take a look at the parameters let's start with equilibrium first the parameters in equilibrium models they tend to be constant parameters take a look at the equation of this model this equation tells me that the change in the short rate over a tiny instant of time it comes from two sources it comes from a drift term and it comes from a volatility term this drift term which is governed by a single parameter lambda think of this lambda to be coming from two sources it comes from the expected evolution of the short term rate with time how investors expect the short term rate to move with time and this lambda also comes or incorporates a risk premium okay so this lambda is a constant parameter and so is the sigma which controls what we call the basis point volatility of short rate if you only have two parameters lambda and sigma this would make this model slightly inflexible for it to be able to exactly match the term structure which you have for the spot rates and the term structure which you have for implied volatilities of these rates for example okay so if you only have these two parameters which are constant i'll find it difficult to exactly match the market information then what do we do we basically create from this equilibrium model an arbitrage free model how do we do it we do it by taking in the constant parameter of this equilibrium model notably lambda in this case and making it time varying okay so once i move to this model see because in this model your lambda is a time varying version of the constant lambda this model now gives you ample flexibility to go and match the market okay now keep one thing in mind this looks a very trivial exercise to create an arbitrage free model from an equilibrium model but the problem here is that you have achieved via a time varying version of lambda an exact match to the term structure of interest rates at least but you have altered the dynamics of how these interest rates evolve why is that so because if you believe that lambda changes in every period going forward then you are you are basically incorporating into your model this assumption that the expected evolution of short rate and the risk premium remember the two sources which this lambda comes from they change for every period going forward and that change in the expected evolution and risk premium for every period going forward might not be plausible okay so therefore one has to just keep that in mind okay now let's move to the ease of constructing and calibrating each of these category of models now equilibrium model is relatively easier to construct and calibrate the arbitrage free model is relatively difficult why is that so because an arbitrage free model it intends to exactly match what the market is doing that might not be a big problem when you talk, when you talk about short trade models which only have a single factor 
I mean, all the models which we are at least dealing with in our curriculum, but that might become a bigger problem if you talk about multi-factor models, okay? But nonetheless, relatively speaking, remember that equilibrium models are a touch easier to deal with because they don't intend to calibrate to the entire term structure, okay? So this was about the ease of constructing and calibrating these models. Next and last, let's take a look at the use case of each. Now, where would you put an arbitrage free model to use? The first use case of these, this set of models is in a superior interpolation. Now, let's assume that you have achieved an exact match to the market observed term structure of interest rates. And when I say exact match, it would be to all the liquid codes which the market is providing to you. There will always be some liquid tenors or maturities whose let's say spot rate or par rate is known to you. It won't be every maturity out there. Once you have fitted your model to those liquid tenors or maturities, and then you get a pricing request for a certain non-standard tenor or maturity, then you can always use your model to price that particular non-standard product or non-standard bond or a swap. In doing so, Basically, what you've done is you have done some kind of a superior interpolation between two neighboring and more liquid tenors. If you were not using an arbitrage free model, you would have done that interpolation using a numerical method such as a cubic spline method. And what we are saying is that because this arbitrage free model captured the entire information which the market was telling you, in that sense, this interpolation is superior. This interpolation captures information about the expected evolution of short rates, about risk premiums, about convexity adjustments, all that has been captured, okay? Next use case. This is about extending the use of a model that has been already calibrated to match the initial term structure to let's say price options or derivatives on these instruments acting as underlyings, okay? So this model, if you were to use it for option pricing and hedging, would create a consistent framework in which both the derivative is also priced in as well as the underlying asset is also priced in. That's what I refer to as a consistent framework. The underlying asset in this model has a model price which exactly matches the market and that would come in handy if you use this model for hedging purpose, okay? So the hedging, when you place these hedges, you won't have any PNL or profit and loss impact just because your hedges don't have a model price which matches the market price. There's a difference between model versus market, okay? Then before I move ahead, let me just highlight an important downside that you have to look out for when you use arbitrage free models. Well, the, the main attraction of this category of models is that it exactly matches what the market is providing in terms of information. But what if that information is distorted in some way? What if the prices that you are trying to match, they are distorted by factors such as demand supply imbalances, factors such as liquidity, factors such as taxes. Now, if those prices are distorted and if this arbitrage free model tries to always match whatever the market is providing and maybe do so blindly, then you are actually attributing all those distortions to the interest rate process, which is something which is not right. Okay. One way you can detect this distortion happening is if you take a look at these lambda t's, okay, lambda as a function of time. For example, I'm using this model. So in this model, if the lambda which I get, which is a time varying lambda, after I have done my calibration, if that lambda comes out to be, let's say, drastically changing every period, okay, it's all over the place. That means that this lambda is economically not plausible. What it means is that this lambda is is truly pricing in some kind of a pricing distortion, okay, a distorted set of prices, okay, that is something for you to keep in mind. Now let's come to the use case of equilibrium models. Now equilibrium models, they become very attractive to you if 
there is no reliable market data which an arbitrage free model can calibrate to when i say there's no reliable market data i'm assuming let's say i am trying to build a model which is for pricing instruments in an emerging market context okay i'm talking about a bond market which has very few liquid tenors available and hence even if you were to try to use an arbitrage free model then the quality of data which this model is calibrating to is questionable okay then an equilibrium model comes in very handy if your use case is about choosing between securities it's about adding value by picking hedges amongst a number of alternatives available or your use case is about monetizing or exploiting temporary mispricings in the market if you were using the arbitrage free model it would just blindly price your, uh, or create a model price that always matches the market so it won't tell you what is overpriced and what is underpriced that's what an equilibrium model would do because its intent is not to match the market per se okay it will tell you that this security is overpriced this security is underpriced and then it's up to you if you would want to place trades on those securities in the hope that the economic relationship or the economic foundation on which this model was based on is indeed correct and eventually you will see the prices of these temporarily mispriced securities revert back to their equilibrium prices and that's where you would then eventually stand to make money from these trades okay so this was a comparative look at these two categories of models arbitrage free versus equilibrium i hope this the set of differences that we highlighted in this video would come in handy when you take a look at the various models that come in later in the two prescribed chapters which deal with various term structure models okay